In the early 1600s, Johannes Kepler discovered several things about the orbits of planets around the Sun. He discovered that they were ellipses. He also discovered a relationship between the period, that is the time for one orbit, and the size of the orbit, specifically the semi-major axis, or half, the long dimension of the ellipse. This is called Kepler's third law. Now, Kepler discovered all this using observations only. He didn't understand why any of it happened. It took Isaac Newton in the late 1600s to explain why by combining his law of gravitation with the equation for centripetal force and setting those equal to each other. You do some algebra and you come up with Kepler's third law in its full glorious form t squared is equal to 4 pi squared over g times a cubed over m. a is the semi-major axis, m is the mass of the thing you're orbiting around, which in the case of planets is the sun, and big G is Newton's universal constant of gravitation. Now we can simplify Kepler's third law into t squared is equal to a cubed over m, that is getting rid of the 4 pi squared over g. And we can do that with a judicious choice of units. That is, if instead of measuring period in seconds, we measure it in years, if we measure distances not in meters but in astronomical units, and if we measure mass not in kilograms but in solar masses, then this full-blown form of Kepler's third law on top simplifies to the simpler form a cubed over m below. To understand why this is, what we need to do is to look at that big G. That's the key. So before we go any further, let me just uh, talk about what big G. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meters squared over kilogram squared, what that means. It means that if you have one kilogram separated from another kilogram by a distance of one meter, then the force between them will be 6.672 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons. Now what's a newton? A newton, remember F equals ma, second law of motion by Isaac Newton. And so a newton is one kilogram, one mass unit, times the unit of acceleration meters per second squared. So we can replace the newtons here with kilograms meters per second squared. And when we do that, we have kilograms meters over second squared times meters squared over kilograms squared. We end up with meters cubed over, we've got kilograms on top, kilograms squared on the bottom, so we end up with kilograms on the bottom, and we still have our second squared. So big G is 6.672 times 10 to the negative 11 meters cubed over kilograms seconds squared, written in the most basic SI units. What we're going to do now is what if we go ahead and we convert from meters into astronomical units, kilograms into solar masses, and seconds into years, what do we end up with? So let's scroll down and do that. By the way, there's Johannes Kepler. Now I've scrolled up and written a few basic facts here as far as what an astronomical unit is. It's about 150 million kilometers, uh, 1.496 times 10 to the 11 meters to be more precise. A year, if you take 365 times 24 hours times 60 minutes and 60 seconds in a minute, you end up with 31 and a half million seconds, 3.156 times 10 to the 7 seconds to be more precise. And the mass of the sun is very nearly 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms, 1.989. So let's take that value for big G, 6.672 times 10 to the negative 11 meters cubed over kilograms seconds squared. 
and we're going to do a unit conversion. We're going to convert the meters into astronomical units. So we've got 1.496 times 10 to the 11 meters is one astronomical unit, or the semi-major axis of the Earth's orbit is 1 AU. Now keep in mind that this is meters cubed. The thing in parentheses in our, in our unit conversion is equal to 1, and so we can cube it, and 1 cubed is 1. Uh, we've, we've properly handled the meters. What we'll do next is the kilograms. 1 solar mass is equal to 1.989 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. And I've run our room on the line here. I'm going to just move down to the next line. And we need to convert the seconds squared into years squared. So we have seconds on the bottom, so seconds has to be on the top. 3.156 times 10 to the 7 seconds is 1 year. And we're going to square that. 1 squared is still 1. And we had to do that because we had seconds squared here. So when we punch that into a calculator, we get 39.48. So if we go back to our long form of Kepler's third law, T squared is equal to 4 pi squared over G A cubed over M. Let's look at that 4 pi squared. What is 4 pi squared equal? Oh, it's 39.48. So we have 39.48 over 39.48 A cubed over M. In other words, this goes away. It's just equal to 1. So we have t squared is equal to a cubed over m. As long as we measure time in years, semi-major axis in astronomical units, and mass in solar masses, this equation is true. It only works for those units, but it is very, very convenient. And just to do a quick example, let's look at Pluto. Pluto's semi-major axis is about 40 astronomical units. That is, its orbit is about 40 times larger than the Earth's. It is orbiting the Sun, so m is one solar mass, so we can, we can kind of ignore that. So we have t squared is equal to a cubed. t squared equals a cubed, so we have 40 cubed. 40 cubed is 64,000. And then we take the square root of that, to get about 253, 250. And that would be in years. So it takes Pluto 250 years to orbit the Sun once.